forgiveness, it's often the person that hangs in there that's overlooked. So people take you for granted. And when you get taken for granted, you feel like, do I have value? In other words, here's the real issue. You're not the crisis. So attention always goes to where the crisis is. So the prodigal son's the crisis because it's the squeaky wheel that gets oil. So if I'm just doing like I should do, then I'm not getting the oil, but I really need the oil. I know I'm in the house now. But just because I'm not in a crisis doesn't mean I don't need to be cared for. I wonder, maybe this is why so many people self-sabotage. They create a crisis subconsciously because really what they're saying is, I need attention. I need to be cared for. I need to be nurtured. They're crying out, hey, notice me. I'm important too. And here's the danger. To the faithful, which requires a certain amount of maturity and stability, there also comes a certain amount of neglect. So when you are faithful, which requires maturity and stability, you're also going to get with that a certain amount of neglect. Because everybody presumes, Miss B, that you're just strong enough. They all presume it. They're strong enough. I remember when I was going through, people would say, are you okay? Man, I hated that question. So what was I going to say? Who could I be real with? No, I'm not. I hate it. I feel like cussing you out, slapping you, pulling your weave off, kicking my shoe off, poking anything that I think like looks. Oh, I'm fine. Praise the Lord. Are you okay? I just smile and I say, I'm going to find my way there. That was my, that's my standard. I'm going to find my, because okay is better than not okay. So I, I figure I'll find my way there. And, and that's why I tell you so often, listen, I minister out of this now because three years ago, four years ago, I couldn't have ministered out of this. I could have ministered out of this place. And it's so important as you keep pressing. And, and, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit some things here. I'm going to knock some things straight up off the head. So people keep asking. They, they think you're strong enough. You can make it through times or you're tight with God. And often people don't even show you or don't see the storm in your life because outward there's enough stability that they, it masks the inward turbulence. But just because you can police the visible sins externally does not mean that you don't have invisible sins internally. Just because you can manage and you're not out derailing your life doesn't mean you don't have confusion or hurt or bitterness or unforgiveness or any other thing because you're going to deal with disappointments. Love God, but deal with disappointments. That's why it's so important that you put yourself in safe places, that you have someone in some place that you can go and that you can be truly transparent and, and all the stuff that builds up. Here's the deal, guys. I mean, it's funny to me. I just came back from Woman Now or Loose, and I'm dealing with stuff, right? I I'm, was going, I said, dealing. People come to me, and they're just, they'll, they'll like, oh, you, and I told one of my friends, I said, watch it when I go in. I said, watch how people do. And everyone celebrates, oh, there's Pastor Paul, etc. But then they come, they're like, you look good. And they like expect me to look bad. I'm like, heck yeah. I'm like, single baby? No. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta get your game back on. <laughs> they go, they go, you look good. And are you okay? And they kind of do the, like this. And I'm thinking to myself, and I told my girlfriends, I said, watch what they do. I said, because to them, I said, guys, it's been almost four years. Almost four years since I've gone through a divorce. See, I talk openly about it because it's not painful like that now. But people will still be like, you okay? Like, you know, you said, I said, shoot, am I okay? I'm looking. I'm so okay, I'm ready. That's some of y'all like. And, and here's the deal. I'm going to hit that even harder. Here's the deal because people are like, oh no, pastor. Now you know I don't even have to talk about the anointing because you wouldn't be here if there was an anointing here. But you just freak out. You see me hold a man's hand, you'd be like, but I'm going to tell you something. I'm not jumping in bed with anybody. I'm not sleeping. I'm not comp I might kiss, but. We 
we're going to get real. Because until we get real, we're never, we're, we're going to implode. We're going to implode and we're going to do stupid things that train wreck our life. And nobody wants to train wreck their life. And so, so here's this elder brother and he's so, he's dealing with all this inward turbulence and, and he gets a seed of silent frustration, which is the most dangerous because secretly he's miserable and he's processing in silence because there's expectations because he's the strong one. He's the faithful one. He's the one that's right. He's the one that's always right. And so we expect, and on the inside, he's dealing with some things, struggling with trust, struggling with bitterness, free on the outside, but living in solitary confinement, don't understand how he can be faithful for 10 years and somebody come in and get promoted in just two days. Don't understand. Come on, you kept yourself for God. And how does this happen when I've been there? And sometimes life doesn't make sense. And so you begin to get disappointed and die in front, silent frustrations with unmet expectations. And the elder brother is like many of us because he deals with it quietly. He doesn't speak up for himself. He walks through life silently and he's going through the emotions and he's numb. And when you get to the place of numbness, you are stuck because you never learn how to locate your feelings, much less embrace them to process through them. So he doesn't say anything until his, uh, his younger brother comes back and he's jealous of him. And it's a trigger point because let me tell you about the person you're sitting next to. Let me tell you about everybody in this room. Everybody has a trigger point. Everybody. Now I might not know your trigger point, but everybody has a trigger point. And if you just touch the person in the wrong place, you know, because you do it to your spouse. Come on. If you just touch them in the wrong place, it'll trigger them. And all of a sudden, things that are on the inside will begin to manifest on the outside. Well, when suppressed feelings go unexpressed, we get triggered. And when you get triggered, it will usually come out in a self-critical way. You'll begin to become self-sabotaging, depressed, or here's the worst one. You lash out on people you really do love. And what you begin to do is take it out onto those that are close to you when actuality, the real target is someone from your past that you are likely too afraid to show your frustration, your hurt, or your anger. And so now when they hit that trigger, you're taking it out on this person. And so now you're affecting your future because something in your past that you were trained, you can't really deal with your now. And so you've got all this pent up stuff because the reality is you don't know why didn't it work for me? Why didn't I get married and have five kids like I expected? I thought my life would be different. I thought our, our business would be in the multitudes of millions. I thought I wouldn't be bankrupt. I thought this, I thought that serving God, loving God. And the reality is sometimes life doesn't make sense. And so when we get that to that place, he's struggling with a jealous attitude. Now I know no one's going to admit it, but there are people in here struggling with jealousy, struggling with bitterness, struggling with envy. I know I'm talking to the person over on the next row, but just in case, go ahead and strap on in because it's not so much that the, the, the elder brother will say, it's not so much that I'm mad at God. It's really not. And I'm not mad at God for being merciful to the prodigal son. Deep within, that's not the real issue. I just have these contradictions and these confusions because I really am deep deep inside, grateful that it happened for you, but I'm frustrated it hasn't happened for me. And so there's this contradiction going on and, and I know that I'm giving it my all and I'm, I'm loving God with everything in me. I just don't know why life hasn't worked the way I thought it should work. And that's the question mark that's looming over everybody's head because looming over your head is not really this internal force of I'm mad at the prodigal son because deep within, if you're in a vein of faithfulness, you really do love God. You're glad for them. It's just I'm having a hard time dealing with how I feel. I'm having a hard time because I have to go home and sleep in an empty bed. Come on. I have a hard time because I don't know how I'm going to pay my mortgage at the end of this month. I have a hard time because my womb is sterile and I'm not having a baby. And Penina, I'm happy for you and your little tribe. And, and I really am. I'm glad about it. But doggone it, why don't I have a baby yet? Why haven't I been able to get pregnant? Come on, Lord, I've been doing this thing, going to the temple year after year, serving and sacrificing. And so the real issue is not that I'm so mad at you or not that I'm not grateful for God's mercy on you. The real issue is I don't 
understand why it's not working the way that I formulized it to. Am I in the house? Am I here for somebody? So this is what I want to focus on in five minutes. The discontentment that exists in